Hi, this is Josh from Analysis Pro. I wanted to introduce you to the Naxport video analysis software and give you a run through of some of the main features and benefits you'll see when using Naxport. So I'm here working on the computer, but Naxport is compatible on both Windows and Mac. And the software, a real benefit is it's offline. So you don't have to have an internet connection to work. Obviously we have our hub platform, which is a great way of sharing your video and interacting with people as well online and through the app. But let's focus on the Naxport software today. So if you've got video, you might find that it's quite tricky to break up that video, pick out your key moments and find some information for it. A video analysis software will help you do that better. So you either tag videos live or post event. And what I'm going to do here is show you where we get to at the end. So I've done some analysis in Naxport and I go to open my library where everything is saved. So I'm going to open up a game and I'm going to be in the timeline environment. So this is where we see all the clips and all the information we've gathered and tagged through the software. So I have the video that I was analyzing and now I have this timeline environment where I have rows of different clips that we call categories. So they're the main things that I wanted to look at. The benefit of the timeline is that I've got the start and end of the video. And I can select a row and it will start showing me all those clips. And I can press two on my keyboard, for example, to skip through those and one to jump back. I've also got benefits of being able to zoom in and edit clip lengths easily with just a click of the mouse. So we can find specific moments, but by using some more tagging tools, which we'll see later, you can also filter down the information that you have. And Naxport has some really nice ways of visualizing the clips and information you have created. For example, there's the matrix tool here, which shows me all the categories and descriptors that we have. So rather than just seeing all of those shots, I might see the shots from the first half or second half, all the shots that were on target. I press that number and then I can jump to those moments. So again, rather than spending time trying to find those key points from the video, once you've tagged it, you can jump to those moments quickly with the data visualization tools that you've got. A popular and powerful tool in Naxport is the dashboards. So you can create different dashboards and they're visual displays of the information that you have gathered. So here on this dashboard, we see a variety of things such as charts and data labels and also a graphic descriptor, which shows where things happened on the field. So this gives you a snapshot of the performance that you have, but the power here is that it's interactive. So if I wanted to see these 27 moments, I click on the number and then it will open up that video player for me. So again, we're speeding up how we get to that video. We use the data to signpost what we want to look at, and then we can jump to those moments quickly to review and get a better understanding of our game and our performance. So our dashboard and our matrix are great ways of visualizing it. We also have the graphic descriptor, which we did see in the dashboard there. And this will just show me where things are happening on the field. So we've got lots of different ways of finding those moments we want to see. Once you've tagged a game and gone through this review process, the big thing you'll want to do is create a presentation so you can filter down this information to share with others. So if I go and open an example presentation we've got here. You can see that it's organized into different lists. So you can make as many lists as you want and then you add clips into them. When we're in the Scout version of Naxport, we can add clips from as many different videos, which is really great for comparing and contrasting over time. We can also add things in such as images and PowerPoint slides, and we can enhance each of our clips by putting notes on them. And importantly, the clip draw telestration tools can be used as well. So if I was presenting this back, you'll see an example of a PowerPoint slide that we've got in here. I skip to the next clip and we've added some telestration into it. So we'll play the clip, pause at the moment that I added some telestration. We get our point across, we talk through it during the meeting, and then we continue playing. And I've got lots of playback controls to frame by frame, go slow motion, fast forward and rewind. So we filter things down with our presentation window. And like I've shown here, we can either present that through the software, like if we're in a team meeting, or 
we could save this out as a video file, including all those notes and drawings that we've got. Or importantly, I could send this up to the Nightsport Hub platform. And that's where we can then share the full video, the analysis, the presentation with all of our team to review and collaborate on better together. So this is kind of the end point that you get to with Nightsport, that we've done our analysis, we have our timeline, our visual tools that help us get to clips quicker, like our matrix and our dashboard, and we filter things down with our presentation window. But how do we get to this point in the first place? So in the main menu of Nightsport, you've got different ways that you can start working. So in basic and basic plus, you can tag a video file that you have on your machine, or you can live capture a video source. So taking a camera, connecting a capture device to it, and then capturing that live. And once you go to the scout version, you can also tag without a video so you can get some live information coming through. Different versions have different ways of how you can interact and share that analysis live as well. So for example, in scout, if you were doing a live capture, you could also send clips and images to the hub live platform with an internet connection. So you can start some, some uh, doing some live review processes as well. So lots of different options there, and we're here to help you through what's possible and, and what will meet your requirements. But let's take a look at how you tag a video file that you've got. So I tag a video and then I can open up a video file that I've got saved on my computer. We then enter the tagging environment and this is where you'll have a tagging window. Now we've got lots of sample tagging windows to get you started. But you can also create and edit your own ones really easily. So these tagging windows, they're just made up of two types of buttons that we call categories and descriptors. If you remember, we had a timeline of all our clips, which are our categories, and we added extra information into those, which are our descriptors. So for example, we had shots, clips of shots, and then we were seeing whether they were on target or off target, first half, second half. And building these tagging windows is as simple as double clicking to add buttons, and then using these options to set them up. So whatever requirements you have, whichever sport you're looking at, you can create a tagging window to find the information and the clips that you need for your team. Your video player is here and you can resize all these windows to suit your requirements. And you have lots of playback controls, playing and pausing the video, frame by frame back and forth, fast forwarding and rewinding, playing in slow motion, etc. So all those things will help speed up how you work through your analysis, whether that's a game or a training. And all you do is you play through the video and based on how you've set up these buttons, you tag things as they happen. So we typically have a category button that makes a clip and we press it and it will make a clip and then we can add more information into it. Now those category buttons can have preset times. For example, if I pressed shot, it might show me 10 seconds before the action, five seconds afterwards. And then I go and add some extra information into those clips as well. If we're using the scout version and a graphic descriptor, we can also mark where those things happened on the field. Category buttons can also be in manual mode. So for something like a possession that we never know how long it's gonna be, we turn it on and it will stay on until we turn it off. So lots of ways that you can build a tagging window to speed up your process of clipping up your game and working through it. Again, if we were doing a live process here and using the Scout version, we could also send clips and information up to that Hub Live platform for live review that people can look through those clips and, and images on their phone as well. When the clips are being created, you've got lots of ways of editing them. So changing the clip type, adding and removing descriptors, and also typing in some notes as well. So I might have a possession clip here, and then I just double click and type in some notes. So very fast, very quick, and very easy to get through um, all your tagging that you need to do. In this environment, you can also load up your dashboard. So if you wanted to see some stats as the game is progressing, whether you're doing that live or just working through a game afterwards, you can open up the dashboard and we see it's adding in those bits of information as we go. After the tagging process, you come back to the timeline. And again, we have that ability to review and interact better with those clips with the matrix, the dashboard, 
that graphic descriptor, our pitch, pitch area, and again, building up that presentation so we can filter down and get powerful feedback for our team. So that's a real snapshot of Naxport. There's loads more features and benefits within it, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can work with a video live or post event, create as many clips in as much detail as you want, view that data with interactive tools like the matrix and the dashboard and the graphic descriptor, filter that down into a presentation, which you can then play back to your team or save out as videos or put up to the hub platform to share with others as well. You've got abilities to export data to start working with that and even combine multiple games together to get a real snapshot of that performance over time. So we're here to help you understand more about which version of Naxport will suit you best and show you through the tools and features that will suit your requirements. So just get in touch with us and we're here to help.